NVIDIA has debuted a new $250 generative AI supercomputer. Sounds cool, but what is it? Well, I'm fortunate enough to have one of these in front of me today, and we're going to take a deep dive into it. Now for a quick unboxing, we can see that it is in a relatively small package and we do have some signature NVIDIA green inside, which is always nice. <laughs> and after that, we are met with the box for our Aura Nano. And we can see that there are two doors, one on each side. And being that it is the holiday season, this reminds me of like an advent calendar. So that's uh, interesting. <laughs> and under the right door, we have our Jetson Aura Nano. It is pretty small and smaller than I expected having looked at the pictures, but I suppose that is good for an edge device. Now opening the left door, we can see that we have a little getting started guide. And beneath that, we can see we have our power adapter and two power cords. So I believe the bottom one is actually for a different locale. Now to take the Jetson out, it is pretty simple, but it is snugly in there. So we just lift it out and eventually it comes out and we can go ahead and get our first look at it. Pretty cool and nice light looks good. <laughs> so following that, we have our power brick, which is part of the reason that this thing is now performing very quickly. So let's quickly go ahead and just take a look at some of the interfaces and ports that we have available on this little Jetson. Now, starting from right to left, we have a 40 pin expansion header. We have a USB type C cable an ethernet connector, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 connections, a display port, and a 19 volt DC power jack. Now, spinning it around to the side, we see we have two camera serial interface connectors. And once again, spinning it to the back, we can see that hidden under the fan here, we do have a micro SD card slot. Now, for those of us who wanna get a little more in depth and a better look at this, if we do flip it over to the back side, we can see that we have a little networking card and what appears to be two networking related antennas. And following that, we actually see some other pins here sticking out and they're kind of hidden. Now, what these are, are some things for power buttons, status LEDs, and other things that may come in handy if you are deploying this somewhere that you want to be able to turn it on and off and get status updates from it in a more remote setting. So basically, say you have this in a robot or something like that, and you want to have the power button for the robot actually control this as well, and same with the status LEDs. That's where something like those may come in handy. Now, for those of us interested in single board computing, size is definitely a consideration as sometimes these devices are going to be deployed in use cases where Space constraints are really a consideration. So I have a few other devices here that I will quickly just give a comparison to. Now, the first of those is another Jetson. So this is a Jetson TX2 developer kit, which I believe was released sometime in 2017. And if I try to scoop my hand around the microphone here and hold these both up, <laughs> we can see that there is a rather significant difference in footprint between the two of them. And of course, being that this does represent the advancements in computing and AI computing over the past seven or eight years. This is far more powerful than this old TX2 here, which is a rather cool looking piece of kit still though. And I do have a few of those that I keep around just for random stuff. Now next, I have two other popular single board computers. The first being an Orange Pi 5 and the next being a Raspberry Pi 5. Now, both of these are probably around 60, 50, 60% 60 of the size of the Jetson here. However, performance wise and for AI use cases and what we're going to see later in the video of the actual ease of use of this for a lot of new popular AI things such as just running Olama natively, there is not much of a comparison. Being that my channel is more AI adjacent and I like to focus on local AIs and things like that, we are just going to do some testing and experimentation with this in the AI scope and realm. Now I've gone ahead and got a little setup going here with just a monitor, keyboard, and a mouse, and of course the Jetson over there in the corner running. Now for this part of the video, what I'm going to do is just showcase a few things that I'm personally interested in doing with this. Now the first of that is just running Olama or being able to chat with an LLM locally on this Jetson. 
Following that, you can actually run Stable Diffusion on this as well. And there are actually a lot of tutorials for this on one of NVIDIA's websites. So it basically walks you through how to do that. Now, for the purpose of today's video, this isn't going to be as much of a tutorial as it is just going to be sort of more of an overview and like unboxing style video. I have noticed that basically <laughs> anywhere that sells these, it seems like they're back ordered. So I am going to in the next few days or next week or so do a full tutorial on actually setting this up, which will basically cover like, okay, I've purchased one, I have it now, how do I get it running? What do I do? But for today, I want to just showcase more of a top level overview. So first and foremost, you're going to have to excuse me if the screen looks a little funky in the screen recording. Now, I normally just use OBS to record the screen. However, for a use case demonstration like this, I want to make sure that I can actually utilize all of the power and OBS would just kind of take away too much of the performance on something like this. So I am just piping it through a splitter to a different computer to be recorded. So if the colors look off or something like that, it can be attributed to that. Now, before we just jump right into it, I just kind of want to give us our first glimpse at the actual Jetson operating system and things like that, the desktop. So first, I suppose we can see a somewhat stylized NVIDIA logo here as the default desktop background, which is kind of cool. And then if you are familiar with using Ubuntu, you will notice that this does look quite familiar because this is a version of Ubuntu 2022.04 to be specific. Now, something that I found to be pretty cool is up in the top right corner here, we see that it says Max N. Now, essentially, I think the best way to explain this is the Jetson Aura Nanos that were in existence prior to the release of this Super, which I have here in front of me, are also able to get the same performance boost that this has. Now, that is thanks to the fact that this is essentially now almost overclocked. So it has selectable power modes, but the one it has that is new is the Max N, which is a 25 watt power mode. Now we have a 15 watt power mode, which we can just click on and jump right into. There is a seven watt power mode, which would require a reboot. So we're not gonna do that right now. That would be for more of like a battery powered scenario or something like that, like a robot or a real edge device. And then finally we have our Max N power mode, which is what is going to allow us to unlock the full performance in AI computing. <laughs> so I just thought that was cool. The only other thing that I think is kind of cool that I want to show is just the Jetson Power GUI here, which is just a little desktop GUI application where basically you can see your clock speeds of the CPU, the GPU. You can see your power monitor if you click over here, temperatures, fan speed, RPM, and things of that sort. So kind of cool and just really for an all-in-one little device like this. It just has some fun little tricks and things like that. Now, I know I said that I wanted to start with Olama, but to be honest with you, being able to run Stable Diffusion on something tiny like this, and especially in my case, when I'm used to running it on something big and beefy like what's behind me, I think it is pretty neat. So I did go ahead and set the system up already somewhat. So I do have my Docker commands here all set that I am going to use to just basically initiate this. And I do have everything set up. We now have our local instance of Stable Diffusion up and running. And we are going to go ahead and basically just generate an image locally and on a small single board computer, which is kind of cool in my opinion. Now, I'm not very good at prompting, but I'll just try to come up with something just for demonstration purposes. All right. So we are going to take a look at a beautiful landscape full of happy computers frolicking in the meadows, 8K realistic HD. <laughs> and basically we get to see right here, really speed wise, not bad at all. And we got to remember that the power draw that is being used right here right now is negligible compared to historically what would be required to run with this. Now, of course, this result may be questionable to some, and it almost does look like an alternate reality version of the Windows XP default background. However, it is <laughs> really just the way, I mean, to be actually be able to play with this locally offline on something that's sipping power and like, kind of cheap in the realm of generative AI, I think is, is cool and, and something that really was drawing me to this. I will go ahead and try one more thing, maybe perhaps a little more lucid and realistic. 
All right, we'll see what it says for, or what it generates for a portrait of a beautiful human smiling in a meadow. I'm worried about how the hands are going to look for this one. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that was um, <laughs> more of just a, a showcase. <laughs> so basically, that just was a quick demo of actually being able to run Stable Diffusion on this. Now, as I said earlier, I am going to make a much more in-depth setup tutorial guide on how to get some of this stuff running on one of these. I just kind of wanted to give a higher level overview of just actually seeing these things in action here. So on this... Um, terrifying note we are going to go ahead and close out of stable diffusion and the next thing we're going to do is just basically take a quick look at olama and running an llm locally on this thing now for the final demonstration we are just going to be speaking to llama 3 using olama and in the command line here now there are actual ways to get text generation web ui or for the layperson, sort of more like a chat GPT interface on here to actually communicate with the LLM. But for the purpose of this sort of overview video, and also because I want to find a better way to actually get this screen recorded when I go into more of a tutorial-esque style um, explanation, if you will, I'm just going to keep it simple and show this through the terminal, which is how Olama does it, um, I suppose, in a stock default way, you could say. So... I will press Olama run Llama 3, and since this is all, it is all set up and loaded here, I can essentially just go ahead and begin speaking to Llama 3. Let's see. All right. So this is totally hallucinating here because it, it has no idea who I am or what my YouTube channel is, but the cool thing is that it is just making me um, <laughs> sound really good. So... All right, uh, that's not necessarily true, okay. But as you can see, I'm, I'm like actually getting into it and speaking. Obviously, if you're watching this, you're familiar with local LLMs and chatting to them and LLMs in general, but it's just cool that it's um, local and I don't even know if these are. <laughs> that was wonderful, thank you. All right. So basically, really a, a kind of quick way of showing the LLMs running locally. And these are just two of the things that I found would pertain to my own interests and my channel that I wanted to demonstrate. Again, this is more of a high level overview slash like unboxing introduction video. But I figured that since this thing is new and popular and something that is right in my wheelhouse. It was cool to be able to do a video on it quickly and things like this. So overall, that really is going to conclude the video for today. Like I said, in the coming days or week or so, I will get a tutorial out there where basically to set this up from scratch. So you have this, you need to burn an SD card to it and things like that. I'll get that all sorted and just find some perhaps won't say nefarious, but um, interesting use cases for it. And then perhaps uh, show some of those on the channel as well. So this has been a fun and long day of filming. And if you have any questions or want to see anything in specific, definitely just drop a comment, let me know. And thanks for watching.